sale pa' pongo Me 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 sale pa' pongo My name is Olga Michi. I'm a travel photographer. I went to Kenya to the Amboseli National Park to meet the Maasai, an amazing people who have managed to preserve their authenticity and find ways to interact with the outside world. Surprisingly, many Maasai speak good English and have internet access, so finding them and arranging to meet was a breeze. I decided to become a real Maasai woman myself and experience firsthand all the trials and tribulations of tribal life. The tribe's most respected woman agreed to help me. She presented me with a red dress, a brightly colored shawl, and piles of jewelry that she'd made with her own hands. She's 52 years old, and her name's Nainguana Matura, and she has four adult children. I call her Mama for short. Mama immediately gave me a chore. I had to go and fetch some water. Mama что-то там навязала, навязала. Я не представляю, как это тащить, когда это будет полное. Это, наверное, очень тяжело. Даже пустое, не очень приятно на голове. Давай, мама. Ага. <laughs> the Maasai collect water from small puddles left in the dried up riverbed for their animals to drink. At this time of year, when it seldom rains, cows miss the hydration they normally get from plants. When it comes to drinking, cooking and other household needs, the Maasai get their water from the well at the lodge nearest to the village. Despite carrying heavy water canisters on our heads, we stop to gather firewood on our way back. Mama is the village secretary general. She's considered pretty. The Maasai have their own standards of beauty. A pretty woman should be bold and sport a pearly white smile with black gums. In Maasai tribes, a woman's love for her man isn't just measured by the number of their children, but also by the abundance of jewelry covering his body. That's why every mother teaches her daughters the craft of beading. You're going to do the construction of the houses, mm -hmm. so you're welcome inside of the house. My Mama has gracefully agreed to show me her house. It's made of cow dung. Mm -hmm. 
It's only they need a small window for only ventilation. Mm -hmm. And you see, if we go out, we'll see a lot of flies outside. But here there's no any flies. Yeah, so yeah. they put a small windows because flies they don't like somewhere dark. Mm -hmm. If they put a big window, then you'll be able to see a lot of flies yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So they put a small one. The Maasai people make face paint by mixing special clay. It looks a bit like rust with cow fat. Makeup is very important to them. It's used both for beauty and to show social status within a tribe. All Maasai people love milk. It's one of their tribe's staple foods. The Maasai eat only cow milk, meat and blood to nourish their bodies and build up their immune systems. At the same time, they eat no game, poultry, fish, fruit or vegetables. Today, the men are making soup and they invited me to join them for dinner. Ingredients for the soup are cooked in two separate kettles. A young goat is boiled whole, including bones, head, hooves and entrails. The amount of water they use depends on how many guests there are, usually no less than 10 liters. We don't put any, any sort of uh, marination, uh -huh. so there's no marination. It's no just marination. plain roast. Uh -huh. yeah. But I think it boil a little it's bit very more. Well done. One, no, one hour more. One hour more? Yeah. <laughs> really? You want a really? one? Yeah. In another kettle, they boil herbs and tree branches such as Salvadora persica. Tribe members use its bark to brush their teeth and aloe vera. So the broth doesn't just have blood purifying properties, but it's also a natural antibiotic. <coughs> so strange color. And so he will, after the he will meat? drink it. Yes, right now. Can you smell it? No, it is a very black. Very nice smell. Smells so strange. You want to No, I don't want to try it. No, it's too much for me. For Maasai people, blood plays just as important a role as milk. In times of hunger, the tribe survived on cow blood. They know how to draw blood from the young calf's carotid artery in amounts that don't harm the animal's health nor kill them. The men choose the right animal and apply a tourniquet to make sure it won't bleed to death. If they can't find the artery, they apply fresh manure to the wound and choose another animal. Cow blood is a favorite drink for Maasai children. Blood and milk cocktails are very popular too. She can make it into something like an omelette even, mm -hmm. or just mix it with milk and then drink. You said omelette, where are you taking eggs? No I, eggs, I, I mean I it's, just, it's just boiled, it's just boiled, uh, ah. uh, boiled um, uh -huh. kind of uh, milk, milk and, uh -huh. uh, and, and put the blood. <laughs> Today, the elders announced that we have successfully passed all the tests and earned the right to become members of the Maasai people. We also get new names. The asking price for the ceremony was two bottles of wine. <laughs> The initiation ceremony itself was rather simple. 
The village elder made rounds while humming a prayer and sprinkling us with cow milk. That's how I was given the name Naisula, it means the winner, and my friend was called Namun Yak, or Happy One. In the past few days, I've been asking myself if they could survive in my environment, whose living conditions are tougher, their simple and clear way of life in the wild savanna, or where I live, in the modern world. That's how we came up with the idea for our experiment. The brave Olun Chai Ale Kassin and his Maasai friends volunteered to help. Of course, getting them to Moscow was a very risky undertaking and involved an awful lot of red tape. But now that I've become one of the Maasai, I had a surge of energy and the desire to achieve my goal. I've been talking to my colleagues here and they are all asking, where is that country called Russia? No one has ever, no one has ever heard about that country. Never even have heard about Moscow. So everyone will be interested even to know the story that I will be bringing back. It is really an experience of a lifetime yeah, to everyone yeah. to be out of the country. You know, we've just, uh, like myself, I've only just been uh, within Kenya and in, yeah, with them. They, they've only just been within uh, this area, so they have not even been yeah, to the yeah. southern parts of, of, of Kenya. One, two, three. Privyat Masqua. <laughs> My name is Wilson Olunchayo Lekasaine from Amboseli village uh, in Kenya on the foothill of Mount Kilimanjaro. We're going to Moscow, Russia for Olga Michis photographic exhibition. <laughs> we can't just believe it. I was a bit nervous, to be sincere. And then when we landed in the airport, it was raining snow, and we saw big trucks pulling snow uh, over the, the... So we, are we going, really, are we going to walk over there? Are we going to drive there? And so, my African friends are in Moscow. It's their turn to try the Russian way of life on Versailles. Because they have no winter clothing, we've had to buy them puffer jackets, hats and gloves. How do people reach up there to get to the, the last floor up? It's completely a different world. <laughs> And actually, uh, most people in Kenya wouldn't imagine that a world like this could exist. Wow. Just like a very soft, very soft. Ha, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, this is the biggest square, and uh, be very proud of our red square. Do you like it? Do you like it? Beautiful. Russian what? coming to take pictures here. Of course, because uh, they're coming from other cities. Oh, it's a, it's a special area? It's a very special area. It's the heart of Russia. Yeah. Yeah, everybody who comes to Russia, yeah. they go into Moscow and go into see Red Square yeah, okay. because it's the most, most famous place in Russia. Oh, that's so, really yeah. Cool. There are no people in the streets. But when we went to the metro, oh, oh, this is where all the Russians are. <laughs> because of so many people. And also going through the escalators, oh, it was a bit scary. We arrived in a village near Moscow, where the Maasai were given a surprise, namely an old Slavic rite of spiritual purification by fire. The Slavonic tradition in the village was a jaw-dropping because you would have not thought that uh, in a country that uh, is very, very much advanced, you would find still the, the old centuries traditions existing. Actually, we have the poses like around Nairobi, but we don't have them in the village. So I've never been on the poses. Oh, it was kind of scary. Especially, I thought like the force was going to jump and throw me off. Yeah. So when well, you saw yeah, that, you saw it similar, you know, we're so yes. happy, yeah. but it's so hot, oh, it's really hot. Super. I Yeah. 
When the Maasai came to my show, it seemed for a moment that the photographs had come to life. The African warriors bravely faced up to the party animals. It seems that civilization doesn't scare them at all. a bit nervous before we start, but after we get to the stage, we get confidence. You know, where you see eyes, you know, people are very friendly, just like where we come from. We noticed that you have more girls than, than the boys. boys. Where are the boys? Where are the Moscow boys? That that. Girls everywhere, the girls, beautiful girls. <laughs> Maybe girls. are you going to give us some to take to Kenya? Is Moscow going to give us some girls to take back to Kenya? We don't usually look for girlfriend to marry. No, it's just a girlfriend. And once, because all the marriages are arranged, so after you are done with your girlfriend, then you're, you're done. Or you can even continue after even she gets married to someone else, she can still be your girlfriend. Very scary. I want to get to the toilet first. <laughs> wow. I wasn't expecting that I could I could even stand and it was my first time and which is incredibly fun. I thought I would oh but unfortunately I, I hold on myself and I managed. But I had just fall once but no injuries. century Moscow, you see how different it was. It's a similar way that the Maasai also came through, although we use uh, different weapons. Like you know, as a warrior, you also have a machete, this is, okay, this one, you can also hold your, your shell, and then you can, you can cut that. You can, you can either hold it like that, or also throw. Because um, if you throw, then it might also go like that, like that, like that, and then it lands here. I have a lot of good stories to tell the village. They wouldn't believe that I walked on, on, on snow. They wouldn't believe that I, I could take a bath in zero, negative five degrees. <laughs> they wouldn't believe that. Negative zero, that I was, I was walking on negative zero, negative six. They wouldn't believe. But I will, I will tell them, I did, and I managed it. <laughs> Welcome very much. Thank <laughs> you.